Hey, welcome to the ground instruction for exercise nine from the flight training manual, which is all about turns. So the flight training manual groups turns into gentle, medium and steep. And all that means is that gentle turns are turns which have less than 15 degree angle of bank. So a really shallow angle of bank. Medium turns are those with more than 15, but less than 30 degrees of bank and steep turns are more than 30 degrees of bank. The effect of increasing the bank angle has the effect of tightening the turn or decreasing the radius of turn. Interestingly, if the same angle of bank is held, then the radius can be increased if speed is increased and decreased if speed is decreased. So to tighten a turn, a reduction in speed would be practical as would be an increase in bank. However, there is a limit to both of these. Let's look at the forces acting in a turn. In straight and level flight, we have the lift forces counteracting the weight. In a turn, we divert some of that lift force towards the horizontal component of lift. As a result, there is less vertical component of lift, more overall lift is needed to maintain altitude. So what does all of this mean? It means that due to increased wing loading, your stall speed will increase disproportionately with your angle of bank. And you can see this from the chart from a 152 QH, that the stall speed has increased by three knots in a 30 degree bank, but at a 60 degree bank angle, the stall speed is 40% higher than the level stall speed. For more detailed review of this, review exercise nine in the flight training manual. But for right now, the takeaway that we have is that as you increase the angle of bank, you increase the forces acting in the turn. So eventually you'll need to increase your pitch and your power to counteract these forces. Okay, so let's talk about a coordinated level turn. What does that look like? So looking outside, you would see the nose moving steadily around the horizon, not moving up or down. From an instrument perspective, we would see airspeed constant, turn indicator shows a constant rate of turn, the ball is in the center, altimeter is steady, zero on the VSI, and your heading indicator is indicating a turn. Now let's talk about coordination and correcting for yaw. When you use ailerons to put your aircraft into a turn, the aircraft will momentarily yaw in the opposite direction before eventually catching up with the turn. To counteract for this, we sometimes say step and roll, which is a reminder to add rudder input to counteract the yaw and to coordinate the aircraft into the turn. But the question is, how much rudder do you want to use? A slipping turn is when you're not using enough rudder in the turn or too much opposite rudder. Basically, the nose of the aircraft is slipping towards the outside of the turn. A skidding turn is the opposite. It's when you use too much rudder in the turn and the nose is skidding towards the inside of the turn. Skidding usually results from attempting to tighten the turn and should be avoided. Here are some more examples of instrument indications from a coordinated turn to a slipping turn to a skidding turn. For me, I always remember if the wing and the ball are touching, then I'm in a slip. It's important to note that in a climbing turn, the outer wing is obtaining additional lift from the increase in speed. And so in a climbing turn, the angle of bank has a tendency to increase, not so with a descending turn. So in climbing turns, keep the bank angle shallow. Okay, just some safety stuff to wrap this up. I can't stress enough that it's your responsibility to see and avoid other traffic. Do not fixate on your instruments, especially during turns. If you do this in your flight test, you will not get a good mark. Also, do not try to turn the aircraft with the rudder. If you're wondering why, look up stall skid accidents. All right, so here are some review questions if you'd like. And always remember, if you do have any questions, just uh, bring them to your next flight lesson. Thanks. Have a great day.